Hello there. Now here's something the eco loons will never tell you, and it's dynamite. It's now emerging that net zero has a lot to do with our financial woes, and further, that it is set to make things worse as we go forwards with saving the planet. We were promised that green energy would be cheap and abundant, that it would make our lives cleaner and greener. It will be an electrical utopia, we're being told. As we glide around in silent cars and fly in jets using some sort of green fuel, when nothing could be further from the truth. Because to get to that nirvana, we need to use huge amounts of rare earth metals. And when I say lots, I mean humongous amounts of it. And according to reports, Europe alone will need to use 26 times more of the stuff by 2050 than we use now. And of course all these elements come from the more geopolitically unstable areas and places where human rights are non-existent. China and Russia, for example. And the methods used to extract these rare earth metals are ecologically destructive. And here's a statistic that you might not be aware of, and this is according to Chinese media. More than 80% of the underground water in large river basins of mainland China is unfit for drinking or bathing because of contamination from industry and farming, says the civilengineer.com. And further, 10% of its arable land is now contaminated with heavy metals. And in a book called The Rare Metals War, Willem Pitron said that to do this net zero thing, we will have to mine more minerals over the next 30 years than have been extracted in the last 70,000 years. And mining for this stuff uses a lot of energy in itself and generates huge volumes of toxic and radioactive material. Now, so-called rare earth elements are not as short in supply as the category suggests, but they do, as I said, tend to be found in countries whose rulers are not particularly friendly to the West. So recycling is the order of the day in order to limit those unfriendly administrations from holding any power over us. But... As we career headlong into the 2050 net zero nirvana, we will be desperate to get our hands on more and more new rare earth metals. As I said, we'll be using 26 times more of it by 2050 than we do now. And think about how much of it we already use in everything from cars to aeroplanes to computers and mobile devices. Last year, The Guardian pointed out that every Toyota Prius has more than 9 kilograms or 20 pounds of lanthanum in its battery. And a US Virginia-class submarine requires about 4 tonnes of rare earth metals. And we won't be the only ones. As more and more countries join the race to net zero, there will be a massive ramp up in demand for these elements. More mines opening up, causing more ecological damage and a faster build up of toxic waste. Then there's the issue of all those abandoned wind farms, with the only way of disposing of the older wind turbine blades being to bury them in landfill sites. But there's also the cost angle. Higher demand for rare earth metals will push prices up, especially if demand outstrips supply. The Telegraph reports today that one global financial group, Nomura, is saying that putting green levies into people's bills will keep prices high for years to come. And that Azad Zangana, senior European economist at Schroders, said... As more countries around the world start to go down the energy transition route, there will be a greater demand for some very difficult to find commodities, like rare earth elements and various other forms of metals that are in short supply right now. So as more countries decide to go down this road, the cost of transition will start to rise exponentially. Costs rising exponentially. That means those manufacturing all the net zero stuff will need more money to buy the elements, meaning the cost to the rest of us will also be rising exponentially. 
Now OPEC controls the price of oil and keeps it high by restricting the flow of the black stuff when it needs to. We're bound to see the same levers being pulled where rare earth metals are concerned. And all of this will tend to push inflation up and may already be doing so. Now when the net zero push started, the price of lithium, for example, rocketed. But we ended up with a glut of batteries on the market and the price of lithium fell back. I doubt the producers will make that mistake again. And with large producers like Mexico and Chile nationalising their lithium industries, we can see this getting very political. And in China, just about everything is controlled by the state. Ditto Russia. And China banned the export of rare earth metals to Japan after a spat between the two countries in 2010, showing that these elements will be used as political levers. At the moment, there appears to be little or no control on how these elements are mined, and in many places, it also includes using child labour or even slave labour. But the West still scoops it all up, and probably not paying the true cost of all the damage being done to the environment and their fellow humans. But I bet the WEF types have decided that 30 years of immense collateral damage to achieve their low-energy proletariat controlling 15-minute neighbourhood social monstrosity is a price they are willing to let the rest of us pay. I would surmise that if the mining companies were forced to clean up their act today and that properly paid labour was used to do it, then the price of these elements would become economically unsustainable. But I doubt very much that would happen. After all, where would we get all our gizmos and batteries from? In fact, the Guardian article I mentioned earlier also said that the EU wants to lower regulatory barriers to the mining of raw materials. And it also said that there is a rush to get the miners into Africa and that capital would be attracted to a continent where labour is inexpensive and environmental protections are virtually non-existent. But I doubt UK eco-loons will worry about that, just like they don't worry about China building and running all those coal-fired power stations. No, they're quite happy to import all that stuff while they pretend to be green. I can see our new future. It now consists of paying trillions in reparations to these countries whose ecology and water tables have been systematically destroyed. You can see it coming from a mile away. Strangling oil and gas while ramping up rare earth metal ecological destruction. Spreading alarm about fracking causing tremors and water table contamination while remaining tight-lipped about the damage the push for net zero is already causing. So we now have eco-loons leading governments in the West by the nose, forcing them to stop extracting oil and gas, but to start heavy mining across the planet that can potentially contaminate land and wreck water tables. And the transition to achieving this will cost trillions, with the ordinary punter and taxpayer always picking up the tab, and the inevitable clean-up costs as well.